Starship Operators is a light novel adaptation uh, about space battles and space politics and nothing interesting ever happens and the show doesn't know what its characters are the show doesn't know how anything exists at one point at one point they're like one guy's running from a battle and there's like a news crew like a tv crew who have, who have been filming the whole thing for unrelated reasons and they're like live broadcasting and the guy who's who's in his ship he's like it's a two-on-one fight i've got to run away i've got to escape i have to flee i have no choice if, if i don't i'll probably die it's not 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 a fight that's worth taking and then the news reporter's like no god damn it it'll be better for our news broadcast it'll be better for for our program if you stay and fight them and the guy's like are you st- are you stupid i'm not gonna fight these two guys and die just for your fucking tv program and he goes away guess which party is framed as the reasonable one in that interaction because i'll give you a clue it's not the one that's being reasonable the news crew are the ones we're supposed to be vouching for or i don't know if it's a news show or just some television show they're the ones that we're supposed to be like yeah man come on stay and fight those two guys i'm sure it made more sense in the book but i'm not reading the book I'm watching the fucking show. I was hoping this would be one of those good light novel adaptations. And by good I mean, you know, your your boogie pop phantoms, your sort of your haruhis, your 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 stuff that deconstructs something or 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 maybe, you know, it could be something like a certain magical index something crazy some some crazy high high autism some crazy battles crazy conceptual high concept shit high concept shit nah (laughs) it's just legend of the galactic heroes mate it's just star wars actually maybe even more accurate it's just now i don't dislike space politics right this you may think i do but my favorite TV show is Star Trek The Next Generation. A show all about space bureaucracy and politics and all that sort of shit. The difference is Star Trek has good writers. <sighs> it's supposed to be some epic epic level shit, some epic level shit, some some wide spanning consequences type shit it's supposed to be it's not it's not it's just bad it's just boring it's just so boring it's just so boring nothing happens nothing happens (laughs) so instead i'm going to be talking about the manga blam or blame depending on whether you know how to pronounce it properly which is blam budamu budamu i'm going to be talking about budamu right which is a uh, manga i'm reading right now you should read it you should read blame badamu blam blam read blam read blam read blam blam shouldn't work the main character has no particular skill set or anything that makes him worthy of winning Besides just happening to have a really big gun. he j- Well, it's not even physically big. He just has a really strong, powerful gun. And every interaction, aside from a few, every time he gets in a fight, it's just dodge one attack and then shoot them. And then he wins every time because he's got the biggest gun in the world. Right? It shouldn't work. This should be terrible. That's the only premise of the show right the show manga whatever but it does work and it works because it's pulled off with excellent aesthetics aesthetics are what holds the blame together it's what propels it from something that that 
handled by any other person would have been shit. Imagine, you that's some Kirito-level overpowered bullshit for no good reason. And yet, it's handled well because it's set in a world that is so interesting. The characters are so interesting visually, aesthetically. This world is just such a curiosity that it's good to have a character like this because it means that they can scale the power levels appropriately. They can have him fight crazy powerful enemies and it'll be a struggle for him. Like, they never make him win easily most of the time. He doesn't win easily. It's always a struggle. And sometimes, because, you know, he's got one attack. It's like, you know, back in the day, I used to play Pokemon Emerald as a kid. And I didn't know you were supposed to level a whole party because you don't need to because it's Pokemon. It's super easy. So I, I just had my Torchic, which is my starter, which eventually evolved into a Blaziken. It was called Ah, because I didn't understand. <laughs> I just I just kept spamming A. I uh, didn't know how, how computer work. It was called Ah. It was my Blaziken. And it was super overleveled because I used it only in every battle. Every battle, I would Blaziken. And I would I would kill everyone in one or two hits, and I had loads of HP because I was over leveled. But that was my only good Pokemon. So if Blazer can knocked out, I lost the the battle pretty much. That is uh, the playstyle of the main character in of Killy, right? He has this one attack. He has this one powerful gun, and if he can't use that gun for whatever reason, if someone knocks it out of his hand or whatever, he's fucked. And so really. They've done a smart thing here, which is they've kept their main character weak and then given him, like, some hope, but not enough hope. That's great. It's called great writing. And Blame is hardly written. It has, like, almost no dialogue. It's all incredible visuals, incredible, stunning designs, character designs. Just, like, it's everything cyberpunk should have become after the 80s. Like, Blame started in 1997 and ran till 2003. If I remember correctly, uh, this is it's like instead of cyberpunk becoming eighties throwback genre like it is now, it's just you know you got your your retro future is what it's called retro futurism, your your cyberpunk twenty seventy seven style of everyone's dressed in eighties clothes and there's neon lights and neon lights and fucking eighties clothes. <laughs> Because cyberpunk just happened to be invented in the 80s. Blame actually evolves the concept. Progressive. I was going to make a world as a fuck about this. If you if you followed my channel for a while. You may know world as a fuck. One of the episodes of world as a, as a fuck was going to be. Progressive versus regressive cyberpunk. And culture in general. But that never got made. Maybe it will one day. But Blame is a perfect example of progressive cyberpunk, pushing the genre forward. I don't even know whether to call it cyberpunk. It's It's got all the hallmarks, high-tech, low-life. It definitely fits those those criteria. But it's just, it's, it's a unique thing. It's kind of, it's m more industrial. It's almost cyber goth. Pretty sick. Would recommend. PewDiePie's favorite manga, funny enough. So instead of watching Starship Operators, go read Blame. It's available on archive.org for free. You can download it in whatever format you so please, you so desire. It's also pretty easy to get hold of. It's a pretty well-known manga. If you, if you only read physical, you can probably find it. Y that's a much better use of your time. Vote Bernie.